Good evening. So as long as you know what you're doing. Our entrance hymn is found in the hymnal at number 817. Lift high the cross. Number 817. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Sisters and brothers, we enter now into the sacred three days that is the crowning of the Lenten season, when through our keeping memory of the Lord's suffering, his death and glorious resurrection, by faith and the gift of the Holy Spirit that we received in our baptism, we ourselves enter into these mysteries through Christ, with him, and in him, so that that life that was in Christ from the beginning, that he held from the Father from all eternity, that suffused his human flesh when he became man of the Blessed Virgin, may now dwell in us through faith and sacrament. To prepare ourselves now to celebrate these holy mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these glorious mysteries of our victory. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting <laughs> life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten son when about to hand himself over to death entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity the banquet of his love grant we pray that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The readings begin on page 59 of the Missalette. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a one-year-old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lentil of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the lamb, land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. 
This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, (coughs) that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body that is for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all, for he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore the master and teacher have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. 
I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. In the days of Abraham, the people of God were shepherds. That was their livelihood. And they would wander from place to place to feed their sheep so that the sheep might be sustained in life, produce the wool, produce the milk, and produce the lambs, that the flocks might increase. But it was the custom of the children of Israel in the days of Abraham. This is well before Moses. In the springtime, just after the new lambs were born, and the people would gather together to give thanks to God that he had sustained them through another year and made their flocks fruitful and abundant, each family would take a little lamb upon which the whole future of the flock and of the people would depend because without the new generation of sheep, the people could not live on the land. They would be dispersed or die. So the lambs were precious to them, more precious to them than I suppose a lot of gold would be to any one of us. But what they would do, guided by the Spirit of God, is each family would take one of those little lambs upon which their whole future depended and they would slaughter it. And the blood of that lamb they would place on the the opening of their tents. And they would roast the, the, the flesh of the lamb and they would eat it. Why would they do such a thing? Well, first of all, they wouldn't give just any lamb to be slaughtered. Because the lamb slaughtered was a gift to God as a, a way of showing gratitude and recognition that every good thing comes from above, from the Father of lights who loves the human race. And so in this sense, they were in some way imitating God in his generosity in giving a precious gift. But they wouldn't give a sick lamb, a lamb that most probably wouldn't survive to maturity. No, they would take the best lamb, the unblemished lamb, the healthiest lamb, the most beautiful lamb. And that's precisely the one that they would slaughter and present to God in an act of faith. God, as you have given us every good thing, including life itself. Our life cannot be sustained unless 
our hearts are set on you. Unless we live our days in trust and confidence that you hold us in your hand as we hold all these sheep in our care. And just as we protect them from enemies and dangers and you do the same for us. And Lord, if, if our lives were just a matter of increasing our flocks and securing greater wealth, but we lived apart from you, then it would be better for us to die. We remember how God called Abraham. After Abraham had waited so many years for an heir of his own flesh and of his wife's flesh. And they had reached old age and it seemed certainly impossible for human beings. But as Jesus would tell his disciples for man it is impossible but not for God all things are possible with God he said to Abraham take your son the one your heir for whom you waited take him and sacrifice him on Mount Moriah and Isaac A forerunner of Christ took the wood for the sacrifice on his shoulders and accompanied his father up the mount and said to his father, very obedient to him, Father, where is the sacrifice that we are to offer to God? And Abraham said, God will provide the sacrifice. And Abraham understood those words to mean God gave me you and now you are going to be that sacrifice, my own beloved son. And I don't know how this can be because you're the one that's supposed to inherit everything but if I kill you, how, how is that even possible? But this strange wisdom that in the new covenant we call the wisdom of the cross, this strange wisdom that comes from God, I will abide in it, I will trust it, and as God has told me, I will do. And so he takes the knife in order to slay his son. But God's angel says, no, Abraham. It is not my intention that you should slay your son. But you had to know what faith requires. And you have passed that test of faith. And what you have learned about the nature of faith, now you will pass down to all of the descendants, all of your descendants, Abraham, father in faith, all who are the people of God, called to a life of faith, a faith like yours. And God did provide a sacrifice. For there was a ram with its horns caught in the thorn bush. And it was the ram that Abraham and Isaac offered to the Lord as a sacrifice. This 
The children of Israel now are in Egypt. 400 years later, they are not herders anymore. They don't have flocks of sheep to tend. They live in little houses provided to them by the government so that they may, as slaves, do the work of their taskmasters to build the the grain cities of Ramesses and Pithom in the Delta, Nile Delta re region of Egypt. So no slaughtering of lambs. No ability really to give any gift of their own to God because they possess nothing. It all belonged to Pharaoh. But God was going to give them something. He was going to give them something now to sacrifice that would liberate them from their slavery. He was going to revive an ancient custom and have them go and purchase a lamb from their Egyptian overlords. One lamb per family, if possible. If not, a number of families get together, whatever they can afford. But they are to sacrifice a lamb to the Lord, just as in the days of Abraham. And they are to take the blood of the lamb and put it on the, the lintels, on the doorposts of, the, of their dwellings. That blood which carries the life of any creature. And this, this sacrifice, this obedience, to a ritual that God prescribed for them would be the means by which God would free them from their slavery and bring them forth from Egypt so that they could worship God in the desert, becoming thereby his priestly people whose whole life is based on the making of sacrifice, the offering of sacrifice to God. Jesus, as a son of Abraham, but also as the Lord of Abraham, as a son of the covenant and yet being the son of God, God's word, the giver of the covenant, now perpetuates the Passover ritual. The remembrance of how God took pity on his people and unleashed the power of his mercy so that they might pass from slavery into a new type of freedom, the freedom to live for God and to make of their lives a pleasing sacrifice to God, offering him not just lambs, but goats and oxen and wheat from the fields and barley and fresh fruits and all that was precious to them when they came into the land of Canaan and settled there.
And so Jesus gathered his disciples for the Passover. But what's going on? There's Jesus. There are the apostles. There's the bread. There's the wine, sure. But where's the lamb of sacrifice? What, what's going on? Just like Isaac asking Abraham, where's the sacrifice? Where's the, the lamb of sacrifice, Father? Abraham answers, God will provide a sacrifice. And that's how Jesus answered the disciples. My Father provides for you the sacrifice. I am the lamb. I am the lamb that God provides. And I freely lay down my life for love of you so that you may pass from a life of slavery to the dark powers of this world into a new kind of freedom. The freedom to, to love as my heavenly Father loves me and as I love you. And to show you as an anticipation of what that love looks like. For I will show you the glory and power of God's love tomorrow on the cross. But tonight, I will give you a share in that cross by taking the gifts of bread and wine and blessing them consecrating them by the Holy Spirit with which I am anointed as the Christ. And these gifts shall be transformed into the Lamb of Sacrifice. The new Passover Lamb. The Lamb of the new Passover. This is my body. This is my blood. And that blood you shall not put on the, the lintels of your doors, but you shall drink it. You shall drink God's own life. And it shall suffuse your body and your soul, your mind and your spirit. And as those gifts were transformed, so shall you be transformed into the one whom you receive. And I shall now give you also another sign of what this love is this love that will display itself in all of its glory on the cross. I'm now going to wash your feet. I'm not going to wash your face or your hands. I'm going to wash your stinky feet. And to do so, I'm going to have to bend down and humble myself. And as I do, 
this is this is what I want you to do but do not confine yourself to simply modeling my behavior externally because I just don't simply wash your feet I wash your feet because I love you I love you even to the end and that's what I want you to do for one another love each other to the end and it is for that freedom that I give my life to you as a sacrifice the sacrifice of an unblemished lamb and so tonight our risen Lord has summoned us together and blessed are we who have come and here in this liturgy he will show us again through his his minister of what his his love look like looks like as the priest will wash the uh, well we have to be honest the pre-washed feet of the twelve but then after that symbolic action we will celebrate the Passover and God will provide the sacrifice Jesus himself is the priest, the altar, and the victim of sacrifice. And once more, he will take the gifts of bread and wine that we offer, and by the Holy Spirit, which he possesses, they will be transformed into his body and blood as the, the priest speaks his words, as Jesus speaks his words through the priest. And then he will invite us to share in the sacrificial meal so that his sacrifice may become ours and his love ours and thus the whole world will be set free. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand. On this blessed night, we recall the great graces of the Last Supper. And we have seen illustrated before our eyes what it is the Lord expects us to, to do for one another and to do with the greatest love and mercy. So let us now present our needs and those of the whole world to our Heavenly Father. Our response is, grant our prayer, O Lord, that in imitation of Jesus' washing of the disciples' feet, the church will rededicate herself to the life of service and sacrificial self-giving. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. That on this night in which the Lord established the priesthood, all priests will recommit themselves to living radical holiness with renewed zeal. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. That the power of the Holy Eucharist will penetrate the heart of all human beings so that Christ will become the source and summit of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For an end to all war and persecution, that for those who have died due to war, for war refugees, for all who suffer due to unjust war, that God's peace and justice will reign throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, o Lord. That all will live with a strong awareness of Christ's real presence and offer their lives to him in friendship. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, o Lord. For those preparing to receive the sacraments, for faithful marriages, and for an abundance of religious vocations, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the sick among our family and friends, especially Kathleen McFarland, that the Lord may bless them and protect them from all evil, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all our beloved dead, that Christ the Good Shepherd may lead them safely home to be at peace with God our Father, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Most merciful Father, in the sacrifice of your Son is revealed the meaning of our life. May his love, his sacrificial love, penetrate all that we love so that all that we love becomes more true and more pure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the, May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the, for the praise and glory of his name, for our, for our good and the good of all his holy church. church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And this Mass is being offered for the intentions of John Creek. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we ate his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, Hugh, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you, as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this chalice, this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servants, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, 
Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, by peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. We told this peccata mundi, miserere nobis, agnus dei. We told this peccata mundi, miserere nobis, agnus dei. We told this peccata mundi, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Let us kneel in adoration before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.